In this video we're going to be looking at expanding and factorising expressions that go into a single bracket. So firstly we're going to deal with expanding um, and these questions get progressively harder as we go through. Um, first one is really really simple. Um, we've got 4 and that's outside of 3 plus x. Now there's no sign in between the 4 and the bracket, so we're assuming that we're going to have to multiply here. And when we do, we're going to multiply the 4 with the 3, and we're going to multiply the 4 with the x. The 4 is multiplying both of them. So if we do that, we're going to get 4 times 3, which is 12, and 4 times x, which is 4x. And you'll leave it like that. If we look at number 2 now, we've got 2f outside of 2f plus 5 so again we're gonna expand this bracket by multiplying both terms inside by the term outside so 2f times 2f is 4f squared and 2f times 5 is 10f and we'll leave our answer as that. Number three, we've got 3y times 2x squared minus y squared. Exactly the same method needed here, the only difference is that we now have two different variables, x and y, but it doesn't affect it at all. Um, we just need to multiply them together. So 3y times 2x squared it's going to be 3 times 3 is 6, and then x squared, y, and then minus 3y three time, three times y squared is minus 3y to the power of 3. At number 4, we've got xy outside of 4x cubed y minus 3 exactly the same method again multiply both terms by xy so the first term is going to be 4 times x times x cubed is x to the power of 4 and then y times y is y squared minus 3 times xy is minus 3xy And moving on to the final one, on this one there are three terms inside the bracket, but that doesn't change anything at all. We just need to make sure that we multiply every term. So we have x, y, and z, and we're multiplying 2z squared minus 3x squared y minus 4y cubed and z to the power of 4. We're going to multiply every single term in the bracket by the term outside. So this first term, we've got 2z squared, we're going to end up with 2xyz cubed. The second term, we've got minus 3x squared y times xyz. So we'll have 3 times x cubed y squared z and then minus 4y cubed z to the power of 4 times xyz will leave us with minus 4xy to the power of 4 z to the power of 5. And that is how you expand um, single brackets. We're now going to look at how we would factorize, so essentially go backwards. So if we were just given an expression like this, what would we have to do to get back to this form here? Prepared a few questions, again of escalating difficulty. Um, the first one we just have 3 minus 
3x. Now the idea is that we're trying to find the highest common factor in both of these two terms. So what we can divide both of these terms by is 3. And when we do that, we're going to be left with 1 on for this first term. And then for the second term, we're going to be left with minus x. So that's our first one done. If we look at number 2 now, we have 4x squared minus 6x. This time, we're able to not only divide by a number, we could divide both of these numbers by 2, but we can also divide by x because both terms contain x. So we're going to take 2x outside of the bracket, and on the inside we're going to be left with 2x for the first one, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, and for the second one we're just going to be left with minus 3. If we look at the third one, we have 7x squared y squared plus 14y cubed. Both of these coefficients can be divided by 7, so we're going to take a 7 outside of the bracket. Both of the terms also contain a y, and in fact they both contain y squared. So we can take out a y squared. So what we'll be left with on the inside for the first one will be x squared, and then for the other one we'll be left with 14 divided by 7 is 2, and y cubed divided by y is just y, so 2y for that one. Let's look at the fourth one. So for this fourth one here we've got 10x squared y minus 5x cubed y squared. Now this one's slightly different to the previous one in that not only can we take out a number and one of the terms, they both have a second term in common as well. So we're going to be taking out the highest common factor of 10 and 5, which is going to be 5. And then the highest common factor of x squared and x cubed, which is x squared. And the highest common factor of y and y squared, which is just y. And then on the inside, we're going to be left with 2 for the first term. And then for the second term, we're going to be left with minus xy. And now the final one. This one looks quite daunting. There's a lot in there. We need to start by looking at what we can take out of each term. Each term has a coefficient, which is a minus. So we're going to be able to take out minus um, and each of those coefficients is a multiple of 13, so we can take out minus 13 from every term. Every term also has an x. We just need to find what the greatest power or the smallest power of x is, and that is x squared, so we'll take out an x squared. Every term has a y in it. Uh, the greatest power of y is y squared, that's in those two, so we'll take that out. Sorry, that was the smallest power of y, that's what we're looking for. Um, and each one has a z term, and z cubed is the smallest of all of those, so we'll take out z cubed. And then we need to assess what's left. So if we did 39, minus 39 divided by minus 13, that would leave us with positive 3, x cubed divided by x squared would give us just x, y to the power of 4 divided by y squared would give us y squared, and then z cubed divided by z cubed would just give us 1, so we can leave that one there. The next one's going to be plus 2, and then this x squared and y squared are not going to be here, they've been taken out, um, but we've got z to the power of 5, so when we divide that by z cubed, we're going to get z squared. And then the last one, uh, th minus 13 divided by minus 13 is just going to be plus 1. Um, 
will be left with x cubed, the y is gone, and just z to the power of 1. And that is our final answer there for that one.